In this prophetic podcast, James L. Rugal shares about the signs of the times that we are living in and retells significant prophetic words from prophet seer Bob Jones. Hey, this is James Gall with God Encounters Today podcast, where God Encounters are for everyone. And yes, God Encounters are especially for you. They really, really are. Now, I'm going to be sharing some things with you today that I have looked at in some previous podcast with you. And this is a, a prophetic podcast. And uh, But it's good to review things, isn't it? But this one is pretty potent. So my theme verse, I might have used this verse before, but it's good to again do um, some good godly repetition. So my theme verse comes from Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2, where it reads, Lord, I have heard the report about you. And I was afraid, Lord, revive your work in the midst of years. In the midst of years, make it known. In anger, remember mercy. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. Now, part of that verse is also then quoted for us in other places in the Psalms. And and we have used that previously in Psalm, looked at Psalm 85, verses 1 through 6, where again, Restore us again, O God our Savior. Put away your displeasure towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? And um, uh, will you prolong your anger through your generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? That's Psalm 85. That last part is verse 6. And so what I've opened with you for this podcast is I always want to ground us in the Word. And that is something that I try to model for us. So our theme scripture for today is Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 2. Because I want to be a bridge from prophetic history from the past to the present, to the future. And that is what I am attempting to do in today's broadcast. Well, what is today's theme? Today's theme is none other than signs of the times that the great harvest has begun. Signs of the times that the great harvest has begun. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word of God, the scriptures. O Lord, we have heard a report, and we are asking that you would revive your work in the midst of the years and that you would grant mercy. And the book of James says that mercy triumphs over judgment. And so we're calling forth for the higher law in your heart. And we make an appeal to that, that mercy would prevail in a time of darkness. So, Thank you, God. Now, may your anointing rest upon this broadcast, and may it have 
a great amount of impact and a result of fruitfulness for your holy name's sake. Amen and amen. So what am I talking about anyway? Well, I'm going to recite Signs of the Times. That's my theme, right? Well, are you ready? Signs of the Times that the Great Harvest has begun. Many of you have heard of the seer prophet Bob Jones. He's been now with the Lord for many years. Many people today recite the words of seer prophet Bob Jones, second hand, third hand. I can say that not all of his words, because he had hundreds of words, that I can recite some of his words firsthand. I'm now going to recite some three words that Bob Jones gave us in 1983 about this elusive thing called the Billion Soul Harvest. Now, I know this firsthand, but I also have been checking this out again because there's many versions about this word of Bob Jones's. And so I have watched and listened to a series of interviews of Mike Bickle uh, of uh, International House of Prayer in Kansas City. And I also just watched a, a video interview of my friend Wesley Campbell with Mike Bickle that was just done recently about the Billion Soul Harvest. I talked as well in recent months with my friends Walt and Julie Meyer, who lived in Kansas City during all of those early years and now are a part in Santa Maria, California, of the healing rooms and the house of prayer that is there. And so I have done a little bit of due diligence because I wasn't going to just rely on my own rehearsing or memory of these profound words. So here we go. What did Bob say? What are these three rather intense words? So here we go. Bob Jones predicted three signs in 1983. One, and there's a reason why I think it's important these be rehearsed right now. I think right now they have the most clarity and the greater fulfillment right now. So I believe right now we can, with great confidence, say these three signs have been fulfilled so we can exercise faith and believe for this great harvest in Jesus' name. What are they? One, Bob said an abortion, abortion would be perfected by a pill. Mike Bickle even turned to Bob and asked, like, Bob, do you even know what an abortion is? Bob persisted by saying, abortion will be perfected by a pill. Now, do you know what has just happened just in recent weeks? weeks, in recent weeks. Now, an abortion pill had been perfected out of France actually a few years ago. But do you know what has just happened in the United States? Planned Parenthood just announced in the last few weeks. Listen. I don't like stating this. And 
you can look this up, but they have just announced and our present governmental administration has promoted this. How the abortion pill works, what it is, what a person can expect, how do I use it, how to get it, how it's available now over the counter, how you can even order it over the mail and take it by yourself unattended in your own home. Not even going to a clinic. Bob Jones prophesied in 1983 abortion would be perfected by a pill. I can say, we can say right now, for sure this word has been fulfilled. And say, well, that's a strange word to give then that it's a sign about the harvest. Yeah, but you see, Isaiah 60 says that darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people, and a light, then a light will shine. So darkness is the backdrop for Darkness is a backdrop for when light shall shine the brightest. So the number one sign that prophet seer Bob Jones gave in 1983 was one, abortion would be perfected by appeal. Number two, and it's also really important that I give clarity to this second word that Bob gave in 1983. I am going to phrase it this way. Homosexual union marriage would be legalized and openly promoted in the United States. What? Now, that has been slowly happening for a while, has it not? But what just happened? The terminology is horrendous. But what just happened in the U.S. government? The Respect for Marriage Act was passed by the 117th U.S. Congress and became law when? On 12 13 2022. The Respect for Marriage Act is a, I'm reading from Wikipedia right now, is a landmark United States federal law passed on the 117th United States Congress and signed into law by President Joe Biden. It repeals the defense of of Marriage Act, DOMA, requires the U.S. federal government and all the U.S. states and territories to recognize the validity of same-sex unions. Bob Jones prophesied in 1983 that one of the three signs of the beginning of the billion soul harvest would be one, abortion would be perfected by a pill. And in the last month, it has been now promoted a pill for abortion that you can order it by the mail. Two, in a month ago, few weeks ago, on 12-13-22, the Respect for Marriage Act has repealed the Defense of Marriage Act, and in all 50 states and territories of the United States, it has given validity to same-sex marriage unions.
That's intense. Those are two of the signs of the times. What was the third? The third one is absolutely crazy amazing. Amazing. Now listen to it. Mom Jones prophesied in 1983, and he had to use terminologies of him trying to describe something that was almost indescribable. And he said the following, Workers in the rice fields in Asia would be watching 24-7 worship and prayer on unplugged, listen to this word, workers in rice fields in Asia would be watching 24-7 worship and prayer on unplugged television sets on their wrist. What? Unplugged television sets on their wrist. Now, we hardly had 24-7 worship and prayer. There was in Seoul, Korea with Prayer Mountain. There was in a few locations, but in Kansas City with the International House of Prayer. There has now been going for 20-some years now. 24-7-365, what? Not just prayer cubicles, but worship and prayer. And it's filmed. And it's available. And it can actually be programmed in. And it is viewable on un plugged television sets on your wrist. By the way, if you're only listening to this and you're not seeing an audio, I just put a smartwatch on my wrist. And Bob Jones saw this and used language that he could try to describe the indescribable. A invention in 1983 that did not exist. That's pretty amazing. Now, I believe with all confidence because not only has the abortion pill been perfected, but it is now available. I don't even like saying this. Over the counter. By this present administration, it is pushing it, and it has now made it available over the counter in recent weeks. Number two, due to the terrible titling of this Congressional Act, the 117th Congressional the Congress, passing the Respect for Marriage Act. Requires the U.S. federal government and all 50 states and territories to recognize the validity of same-sex unions. That just happened. All three signs have lined up. So, now, let's take encouragement from this. Let's go back to our scripture. Lord, I have heard the report. I was afraid, Lord. Revive your work in the midst of years. In the midst of years, make it known. In anger, remember mercy. And that is our appeal today. But I want you 
and anyone who's listening to this around the world. And I also want to say that I don't believe that we should take Bob's word, a billion soul harvest, as the final word on the harvest. We see in part, we know in part, and we prophesy in part. And as great as Bob saw, why are we limiting the harvest to being one billion? Because he saw one billion in 1983, and we have a whole lot more people alive on earth today than we did in 1983. So why not two billion? So let's do this. Let's pull a Joel 3, I think it's 13. Put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Now with full confidence, now with full faith, we can say that the signs have been fulfilled. Because many have been saying, well, when when does this billion soul harvest begin? I have wondered that myself. I've said, well, there's been a harvest been going on in China for a long time. There's been a harvest going on in Iran right now. There's a harvest that's been going on here. There's a harvest that's been going on in many different, in Brazil. And in our, there's many, the harvest been going on in Nigeria. There's a harvest been go- How about this? Let's just draw a line right now and say, because we know for sure that those three signs are truly fulfilled. Abortion by a pill is perfected and readily available. Homosexuality is legalized and promoted because on 12 13 22, it was authorized. by our present government. And we already know this. We have got new inventions. And I just am going to make a declaration that with new technology, we're even going to have more inventions. For 24-7, 365 worship and prayer to go around the world. And it is the battle of worship. Who shall we worship? Well, there is a rising, a worshiping army. Years ago, Michael Ann and I in a prophetic duet, and it was spontaneous, and we began to sing together, the velvet warriors are arising. It was amazing because, you see, and when you're singing prophetically, that means it's spontaneous at the moment. We were singing in unison, unrehearsed, a melody structure at the same time. I We go off. She stayed on the melody. I go into harmony. We're singing the same words, and we are having the same vision, and we are describing what? So that itself was an amazing wonder about the Velvet Warriors, but describing how they seemed to be coming forth slower than what we wanted. But why were they called the Velvet Warriors? Is because they were marching on their knees. Worship is different from praise. Praise can be commandment, but worship is an inner attitude of bowing in your heart before the Lord. And so I want to also now declare The time of the Velvet Warriors is here, and it is the humble sound of worship. The Velvet Worship shall prevail. Yes. So here is now my closing prayer. For the signs of the times that the great harvest officially begins. In Jesus' name. I just had a dream this morning where my friend Mike Bickle and I were dialoguing back and forth about this very thing. And that's why I'm sharing about this in this podcast. I woke up 
having a dialogue, going back and forth, and it, I was telling stories, and then I was rehearsing like I was Mike Bickle and, and telling his side of the stories. And that is why I was propelled to tell this three signs of the times that the great harvest has begun, because I just dreamed about this exchange this morning. Here is then my closing prayer that comes from Revival Breakthrough, preparing for seasons of glory, awakening, and the great harvest. You need to get this book because it is one of the best timed books of all the 45 to 50 that I have ever penned or co-authored. And here is our closing prayer. Father, we hunger and thirst for more, for an increasing measure of your presence and for your promises. We ask that you would move upon our hearts by the Holy Spirit and awaken us for the times in which we live. Let us honor the precious stewardship that has been given for these days. Revive us. Revive your work in the world. Thank you in advance for your insights and your revelations for us and to us. For your holy name's sake, amen and amen. This is James Gall, and I am declaring the signs of the times for the beginning of the great harvest of Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. And get a copy of Revival Breakthrough. It's also in a YouTube devotional. Excuse me. It's also in a U version, Bible app devotional. And it's in an audiobook format. Um, as well. Amen and amen. God bless you. Get ready for a powerful supernatural journey. Revival is coming. Do you want to be a part of Seasons of Glory, Awakening, and the Great Harvest? James W. Gall's book, Revival Breakthrough, takes us on a journey towards an unprecedented outpouring of God's Spirit. Get Revival Breakthrough today at jamesgall.com.